June 4th, and it's the fourth day of the 30 Days of Creative Things. And today, uh, I will be taking a standard hobby servo and converting it to continuous run operation. A uh, standard servo will only go from 180 degrees, you know, back and forth, you know, center 90 and 90. Um, there's various mechanisms inside it that prevent it from, you know, just spinning when power is supplied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of those mechanisms out, and what that should give me is a compact, geared, 5-volt motor for using on robotics projects or pretty much anything that needs a geared down, you know, rotational system that's it's even controllable. And you can also have it run forward and backward. Okay, so here we have our standard S3003 Futaba servo. All the standard control horns mounting hardware. Okay, first thing we need to do is take it apart. As you take the top part off, you got to be careful not to lose any of the gears. Get a mental image of where they go, how they go. We need to take off the horn. Okay, this gear here that was attached to the horn, this is the little guy with the stop on it that prevents it from going more than 90 degrees in either direction. So we just need to get rid of that. We can do that with a uh, little Dremel. Terrific. Careful not to take off too much of the gear, uh, preferably none. Okay. The finer work, you get in there with an X-Acto knife. Just very gently. Depending on the servo you get, you uh, this could be harder or easier. Um, if you do get a standard, you know, Futaba-esque 3003 or, you know, some uh, variation thereof made by high tech or whoever, it's most likely going to have a nylon uh, gears in it. So, shouldn't be too bad to cut apart. Okay, that rotates, no problem. That's step one. Step two, this here is the uh, potentiometer that the circuitry uses to determine the current position of the horn and whether or not it should continue to rotate or not. And what we need to do is take that out, um, snip it, actually probably just we can do that. This is pretty cheap servo, so I might just be able to snip that off, glue it in place, and call it a day. Before I do that, I just want to find the approximate center on it. So that when I glue it, it'll be real close to real close to right. 
So it looks like center is about there. Take that off. Okay. Doesn't seem to be much to this. Pull this gear out so I don't accidentally hit it with the sanding wheel. Cut away some of the cruft that the sanding wheel created. Now this actually turned while I was sanding it, so I'm just going to pop it out all together and see if I can adjust it from here. Now what some people do instead of uh, you know gluing gluing the potentiometer what they'll do is they'll unsolder this all together under here it's just three pieces and then solder in two resistors because that's basically all this is either way it's fine the whole thing's plastic it should glue pretty easily with some super glue you can see a glue if you had it would work great I don't have any Okay, super glue is dry. That doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Reassemble. Now these gears will have a some white uh, uh, liquid on them, not liquid, but lubricant, which kind of, you don't want to wipe off that lubricant. That keeps your nylon servos going. As you can see, spins around a complete circle. That was easy bottom on, just screws in, there it is, let's test it out. Now here's your standard servo, and as we can see that just goes left and right. Here's our modified servo. You can see as if we just go up a little on the stick, it moves slowly. If we pull up on the stick, it's full out. In one direction, centered, and then back direction. So there it is. Uh, pretty simple build. I hope you'll give it a try. Um, now it doesn't have to be just run off of a you know a receiver. And a, and a RC transmitter. It's just I happen to have those on hand to test it. But you could certainly write a program to run one of these off of uh, a basic stamp or an Arduino or a Javelin or you know any microcontroller that has some you know pulse width modulation output. It's very simple. Um, and that's it. Now you have a geared uh, high torque output. That's uh, continuous rotation. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you've been worried about trying it before and you're like, oh, that's probably too complicated or whatever, it's really not. As you can saw, it happened in a few minutes. So that's it. Enjoy.